This is our supply schedule outreach for District 6. And um, we had the pleasure of holding it here and working with uh, the Honorable Gabriela Santiago Romero uh, to be in her district, and as well as working with Council President Mary Sheffield. Uh, they will not be available to attend the events at this time, but they do have um, presentations for you. Uh, so at this time, if we could queue up um, Council Member Gabriela Santiago Romero. Hi everyone, my name is Gabriela Santiago Romero. I am your District 6 City Council member, proud Detroiter, raised right here in the city. I ran for office to ensure everyone has a seat at the table and access to opportunity to create vibrant and thriving communities. My office recently launched the 6 for D6 policy priorities, which includes equitable developments, transportation, housing, protected and expanding rights, environmental justice, and public safety. To achieve progress on these policies, it requires a collaborative approach. We must partner and work together at every level. In that spirit, that's why we're here today. I'm excited and grateful to co-host this event with the Office of Contract and Procurement and the Civil Rights Inclusion and Opportunity Department. My team worked closely with them to bring this event and associated information from City Hall to you. Tonight is an opportunity for you, our local Detroit-based businesses, to learn how to become a vendor with the city and bid on contracts because Detroiters keep Detroit moving forward. It's not only important that you have access to this content, but that you hear directly from the experts and have the opportunity to ask your questions about the process and relevant timelines to gain insights and direction. This is about sharing resources and information to increase access to opportunities which helps create equity. This is about creating a city with vibrant and thriving communities. This is about you. I'm sorry I can't be there with you in person tonight, but I hope you find this event helpful and informative. Thank you for making D6 and the broader city strong and beautiful. We look forward to working together with you. So at this time, I'd like to bring up uh, Ray from Council President's Office, Mary Sheffield, um, who represents District 5. Good evening. Come on, don't be dead. What up, though, Detroit? Yeah, that's more like it. Uh, as stated, um, I am Ray Simpson from the Office of the Benevolent Council uh, President, Mary Sheffield. Just encouraging you all to take advantage of the opportunities that are here today. Uh, being married to an entrepreneur, I know firsthand some of the barriers that some of you all face when it comes to securing contracts with the city of Detroit. I'm glad to say, however, that under the tenure and leadership of uh, Sandra Stahl, that in the city of Detroit, it is accessible to obtain contracts for entrepreneurs for city residents. In fact, it's encouraged. Uh, please take advantage of the opportunities and continue to do the work. Thank you for having us. All right, so I'd like to introduce you to a couple of our panel people today that will be giving some presentations. They'll come up a little later. Um, so we do have Nancy Sapita from the Office of Contract and Procurement. If you could just raise your hand. And then we have Denasia from CREO, which is Civil Rights and Inclusion and Opportunity. She's going to talk to you today about how to get certified. And then we have direct, oh, wait. Oh, you raise your hand. Okay. And then we're going to have um, Director Counts from um, the Demolition Department. She's going to talk to you about proposal in um, and how you could become a trash out vendor. Um, and then we have another uh, guest that will be arriving shortly. It's a lot of traffic on the freeway uh, from the General Services Department. Um, her name is Crystal Perkins. Uh, she is the Deputy Director for that department. Um, in the audience, we do have with us the Deputy Director of the Civil Rights and Inclusion Department, um, Ms. Erica Hill, if you could just stand up. And then we do have um, a part of, honorary part of Team No Limit, um, <laughs> but he's from the Civil Rights and Inclusion Opportunity. Um, taking all of the pictures and you can get him for any questions or anything like that. Um, this right here is our big chief. <laughs> So all right, let's get started. 
Um, again, my name is Tony Stewart Lemon from the Office of Contract and Procurement. And so in the Office of Contract and Procurement, we procure anything uh, that any of the departments have a need for. Uh, so tonight, we're going to talk about some specific opportunities with the Detroit Supply Schedule, which Nancy will tell you about those set-asides. And we're going to talk about um, the proposal and trash outs. And we're also going to just drift off into um, how to do business as well as some of the other opportunities that you can find with the city um, that are out there. Um, as many of you may know, the city did receive $826 million um, of American Rescue Plan Act funds, and there are opportunities out there for that. So you are in a great spot today to learn, um, and we hope that any questions that you have, do not hesitate to ask them, okay? Um, so in the Office of Contract and Procurement, we are located at 2 Woodwork Avenue. Um, it should be in some of the books that you have, um, so you don't have to necessarily write that down. And if you registered all of the presentations that we have tonight, we will share those with you. Um, but we're located at 2 Woodward Avenue. We are in Suite 10008. Um, and anything that you need from us, we have office hours, social media. Um, you can follow us on our social media. Each of you should have seen something about um, how to do business with us. It looked like a magnet. You can scan it. There are a few up at the table, but if you scan those QR codes, it take you directly to uh, information on how to do business with us. So without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Nancy Cepeda to get into the presentation. Hello everyone, my name is Nancy Cepeda and I'm Office of Contract and Procurement Assistant today. Um, I'm, welcoming you to, I'm welcoming you to this event in this session. We're going to learn a lot about how to do business under the supply schedule. Um, this is going to be recorded and is going to be provided for those companies or uh, businesses that could not be here tonight. So it will be posted on our social media, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Creo will have a copy of it. I will have a copy on the procurement office side, um, as well as um, any of the presentations It will be uploaded to our link tree that is attached to this QR code. Um, we uh, do offer translation services. Thank you. We do offer translation if anyone needs it tonight. Please raise your hand if you need translation in Spanish. Hola, bienvenidos a esta sesión. Estamos dando información en cómo hacer negocios con la ciudad de Detroit. Um, esta sesión está grabado esta noche para los que no pueden estar aquí hoy. Uh, si necesitan traducción, por favor, uh, díganme ahora y lo puedo decir en español totalmente. O si no, después de esta sesión podemos hablar y puedo um, ofrecerle mi ayuda con cualquier pregunta. Anyone have any questions? Español, alguien necesita traducción? Ok, no. Ok. <laughs> so, gracias por venir. Thank you for coming. So, uh, the Office of Contract and Procurement, it has an agenda. So, our next slide, please. We have an agenda, and the agenda will be welcome, welcoming you here. Introductions to our staff. We have here today, Office of Contracting and Procurement. You're gonna have the, the ability to chat with our directors from um, general services, and also with uh, demolition. Uh, also with CREO, who is the Civil Rights and Inclusion and in Opportunity. Thank you, Tony. That's the last one. I think you go back. Okay, there you go. One second. Technology is great, but sometimes it doesn't function the way we want it to. Okay. Great. So, the, the Detroit Supply Schedule Program, which is DSS, 
is a procurement vehicle for reoccurring service, goods and services that combines the buying power of the city of Detroit and negotiates prices, price discounts for commonly used goods and services. What that means is that things like ground services, guard services, uh, moving and relocation, janitorial, those are things that we need every year to, to procure. So every year, you know, we have these set, set services that we need. So what happened was the Office of Contract and Procurement and the city council members um, came up with this, um, this program. Um, they helped to come up with this program to work together to create this supply schedule. So meaning that companies that get certified through the city of Detroit will have the ability to be long-term standing companies with the city of Detroit. Um, it's going to be a better and easier process for you if you become certified through the city of Detroit. So that's why we encourage those uh, to get certified through the city of Detroit. Um, right now, currently, we have 30% uh, 30, 30 of the supply schedules are reserved for certified Detroit businesses. Uh, the benefit to this, there's a couple of them. There's contracts, there, the contracts are in place prior to need for reoccurring services. So these are things that we already know that we're going to order, so we're going to put that out there and you guys would be able to um, bid for these contracts. Um, they're shorter in procurement processes because normally the process takes about 60 to 90 days when it has to go in front of council um, because it has to be approved. Your company has to be approved once we uh, evaluate who's going to get the contract. But becoming a certified Detroit business or a supplier, uh, it'll be a shorter process for you because we already know that you are qualified to do this job. And uh, like I said, it's probably approximately 30 days of process. Um, trying to make it shorter, but <laughs> um, right now, like the process is probably taking up to 30 days. Okay, um, the reoccurring goods right now, um, approximately, oh well, these are the goods and services listed. Um, the first two um, are, are active, uh, which is grounds, services, and janitorial. So we do have supply schedules for those. We're working on the rest to get uh, approved. So bear with us. We're going to try to do the best to get these services under the supply schedules as well. Um, let me see. Uh, the next slide. Oh, oh, insecurity. Sorry. Excuse me. Insecurity. So um, the reoccurring goods right now, as we stand, um, the Schedule One ground maintenance. We have set aside projects for pro, projects spend like a projection, right? For five years, for that ground maintenance, we have approximately fifty million dollars to spend uh, on these services for just for that supply schedule. For janitorial and custodial services, is approximately forty thousand forty million dollars set aside. For Schedule 3 is Facilities Management Services, which is approximately 65 or $66 million. For Guard Services set aside would be $20 million. Demolition would have a set aside for projected services for uh, approximately $70,000. 70, 70 million dollars, I get those, <laughs> 70 million dollars. All this is in millions. So we are spending a lot um, to provide services uh, throughout the city. Professional services, um, approximately $347 million. Um, moving relocation services, approximately $4 million. Clothing, uniforms, those services, $8 million. Fire, security, law enforcement, $8 million. These are all approximated, but we, um, and medical equipment and supplies, approximately $25 million, 25 to $26 million. So there is a lot of funds, a lot of money that it takes to run these 
services or provide these services, and we want to make sure that the Detroit, is, the Detroit headquarters base um, businesses are getting this opportunity, and that's why we're going to do outreaches within the community, not only here, but within every district, um, according to the uh, supply schedule ordinance that needs to be done um, every year. So please look out for them as well. We're going to provide those um, on our website, on social media. We'll be having other um, informational sessions as well that you can come to. Okay, so now that I told you, right, about the availability and the background, I know you're here for one specific thing also that people like to ask all the time is, what do I do? Where do I go? How many people are registered right now with the city of Detroit? If you raise your hand. Who is not? Please put your hand down. Who is not? Okay. So we can, re we can give you this website, which is www.detroitmi.gov backslash supplier. You go there and you'll be able to register your business, see the open bids, and a lot more resources that you will need um, for when you want to register your business. We want you to be able to leave here tonight registered. And so if you want to follow along and listen, it's very easy if you have the information on hand. Um, if not, we do offer office hours as well where we can go over any questions that you have with our department, with the OCP department, as well as um, as well as um, any, any inquiries that you have. Our QR code will bring you to resources where we have past presentations. We have our presentation tonight that's going to be uploaded, as well as um, <clears throat> prior presentations from Creo and more resources. So please, if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to ask um, the directors when they come up. Um, right now, what we need from you when you go to register would be the tax ID, a valid email address, bank routing number and account number, business classification certifications, and we're going to talk about that more uh, when Creo comes up. Uh, and for technical issues, we have a contact person for our e-procurement team. So if you have issues when you go to register and there's certain things you don't know how to do, like uploading documentations um, or, what, or something, ha uh, what it is specifically you have that's a technical issue with our procurement hub or the Oracle Cloud, you can call uh, or you can email this email right here or call 313-670-8106. Okay, the next one. That is our site right here. It's www.detroit.gov backslash supplier. You should have a handout that was within your uh, booklet uh, that has the uh, supplier website. So if you wanted to grab one on your way out, if you didn't get one tonight, please make sure you, that you grab one tonight. This is the uh, contact information for our uh, for our chief procurement officer, Sandra Stahl, Tony Limit, who is the di deputy director of OCP, and the e-procurement specialist, Cedric McCree. That is Cedric, right? <laughs> okay. So um, in order for us to give you the information that you need, it's best to ask the people directly involved in building these contracts or getting these or putting that contracts out which is the department um, right now we want to um, thank miss crystal perkins director per crystal perkins deputy director Ms. crystal perkins from the general service department she'll be answering some of your questions about the um opportunities that her, her department has so crystal <laughs> You ready? So, um, Crystal, as the deputy director, we want to know, can you give us a little bit of information as to what you're looking for for 
mowing your vacant lots, cutting down trees, um, any of those things that will fall up under supply schedule. Um, like one of the parts that we know when you put it out, you never get a lot of bidders for uh, weed brush control or um, weeds and vegetation. Can you give us a little bit of information about that? Uh, sure. Um, you asked about a couple of things, and I think the first <laughs> thing you said were, um, were vacant lots. So we can start with vacant lots. So we do have a, um, through procurement, a supply schedule where we um, look for vendors who are capable of mowing the vacant lots. And we have like 96,000 vacant lots in the city. Um, it's not just a push mower, you know, it's like really big lawnmowers with bat wings. Um, there are certain specifications that we're looking for with those mowers and making sure you have the equipment and the capacity. That's for the vacant lots. We have uh, another supply schedule that deals with um, janitorial and trash out services, uh, blight remediation services. So with that, it's definitely the staffing and the um, equipment as well. Um, I believe with that one, I think they're all three lumped together. Am I correct? Oh, trash out and janitorial, yes. yes. Um, so with the um, trash outs, um, it hits both our department, general services department, and also uh, the demo department. And so with those um, type of services, we're looking for basically the same type of equipment. I don't know if Ms. Counts was able to speak to that. Um, but a lot of the vendors that we have for that currently, they have, um, you know, your regular tools, your weed whackers, things of that nature, but also um, skid steers, because there's a lot of heavy lifting of debris that may be on the location, um, removal of mango fences, um, overgrowth, a lot of overgrowth, a lot of brush. Um, with janitorial services, I believe that one is still open as well to be on that supply schedule. And um, mostly it's the capacity, um, meaning the people. The um, equipment more so, you know, it's cleaning supplies and things of that nature. We are looking for vendors who are willing to um, buy green products, you know. In the uh, economy that we're living in now, in the, the, the state of the world, we are looking to go green and we're looking to take the city green. So those vendors have to be willing to um, participate and purchase and use green products, eco-friendly products, the paper towels, the toilet paper, things of that nature. So Crystal, um, you mentioned something about mowing. What about the freeway berms? Do they require the same type of equipment that the parks would require? Or is that something that a smaller vendor would be able to participate in? With the freeway berms as we have it now, the smaller vendors will be able to participate. And what type of equipment should they look for? Okay. Um, let me bring that up. <laughs> you know, I just got here. I'm a little late and I apologize. But um, let me pull that up right quick. Got another question? Are there any questions in the audience um, for anybody interested in landscaping, vacant lots, mowing, anything like that? Up, up. I see a question in the back. Uh, no questions? Right here in the hat. You want to come to the mic? Would uh, towing services uh, be needed for those um, abandoned lots? So in our um, contract with our current blight removal, we do have uh, the ability to remove cars on an as-needed basis if assigned. Generally, we will reach out to um, our internal departments, um, our partnering departments to, uh, like police, to remove an abandoned car. They have an A-band unit, but sometimes that's not always um, possible, and the, um, the vendor may be required to do so. Gotcha. While I'm here, can I ask one other question? Yes. The ground services, um, is electric opportunities available with ground services? 
What do you mean, electric equipment? Um, electric services, as far as, like you said, going green with electrical stations, um, any type of electrical wiring for those um, particular um, stations in the city? Is anything available? Not with that? ground services, no. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? Come on up. Uh, I'm Kenji Lemon, I'm owner of One Star Property Maintenance, and I had a couple of questions um, regarding what you went over. So um, I wanted to get clarification as far as um, weed control. Um, is that a major component of what you're looking to um, include in the um, supply schedule, or is that more of a, um, a pass-through, you know, for different departments, or is that handled as an as-needed basis, or? So the um, weed piece will be part of our blight remediation contract. It wouldn't be a separate supply schedule. Okay. So it'll be part of the services that's provided by our vendors who are awarded contracts through the blight remediation. Okay. The next question that I have is um, in regards to, um, I think you mentioned parks as well. Mm -hmm. um, are parks included as part of the supply schedule as well, or would that be separate? There is a supply schedule for mowing um, that, that's including the parts, yes. All right, so then last question, I promise. Um, so with the supply schedule, is it where the prices are negotiated in advance and then the work is doled out as it comes available? Or is it where we're qualifying for being on that schedule and then it's just a limited pool where we're bidding on the same work? The latter. So the latter you are um, getting qualified right now to be on the supply schedule. As the need arises, the department will reach out to OCP with the scope of services that we need. They will contact those companies that have already been pre-approved and on the supply schedule for whatever service that is. At that time, you may submit a bid within a time frame given. So it may be a week, two weeks, a month, however long the bids are open for. So during that bidding process, you will submit your proposal with your pricing. I know you got another question. You just gave me something else to think about. So if you put the information out, or the um, RFP, so we have a shorter amount of time to go out, look at the site, and then return our information as far as pricing? Okay. I'll take that one. Thank you. So on the supply schedule, the important part about that is that you're being pre-qualified. So when the department, as she said, has a need and they come to OCP and say, hey, we want somebody to cut the grass, we will only invite those people who have been pre-qualified. So the pre-qualification process requires you to give us your clearances, your affidavits, and we take all of that to city council. And then city council, we say to them, yep, we vetted them, they have the capacity, to provide the service, they have the equipment, they have a project manager that has a license and everything. Um, they can do everything that we're looking for. And then council will say, yes, they are approved to participate. Those are the only people when one of the directors say, can you give me um, a company that can provide X? If you're not on the supply schedule, you can see the bid, but you wouldn't be able to submit any quotes or prices because you haven't had went through that pre-qualification process. Now, these are long-term contracts, so most of these on the supply schedule, they're for five years, um, unless the supply schedule closes. Now, the supply schedule, you can submit your qualifications at any time, because it's open. The ground schedule is open through 2024, because it opened in 19. Uh, so, you know, if you're interested in that one, you want to go there, you want to take a look at what's the basic requirements, and then with those requirements, you want to submit your information so we can try to get it in. Um, and then from there, whenever they have any, any opportunities, you can only bid. Everybody else will look in and we get calls and they say, I want to bid on that tree removal. Oh, you're missing out because you are not approved on the supply schedule. Um, so we tell them, come to the event, learn what you need to do, go into Oracle and submit your documents so that you too can take part in that. Um, so that's what that is. Want to come up? Where can we find the equipment and staffing requirements for the different supply schedules? 
So for our ground services, when you go to that website, www.detroitmi.gov forward slash supplier, um, you could click on uh, the open bids and you want to look for 18186, one. Um, and then in it, you'll be able to download uh, the attachment that has the documents that tell you like this is what's required, um, these are the scopes. So it gives you the basic there. Uh, but when Crystal reaches out to us and says, I'm specifically looking for somebody to mow at this park and this is the equipment that's required, then that's when you'll have the official for that potential bid. Um, but the qualification is just gives you like an overall general of what type of equipment you're gonna need. So going back to your question about freeway berms, um, so with freeway berms, you will need like a zero turn mower or a tractor um, with flare or uh, side arm mowers, backpack blowers, trimmers, um, definitely some type of disposal unit such as garbage packers or large dump trucks to dispose um, of the, the, the debris, the waste. Um, and it's also recommended for freeway berms that you have traffic control devices for safety. So the orange cones, you know, and it's for all of our outside blight remediation, the proper PPE for your employees is also required. Are there any questions? No? Um, so the next one that we want to really talk about is um, the trash house with the proposal in um, neighborhood program, uh, which Director Counts runs. And so, um, Director Counts, do you want to tell us, like, what are you really looking for when we say trash out? So, um, Crystal kind of gave us, like, you know, brush and a little bit. I know yours is a little different and specific. Uh, can you tell everybody exactly what you're looking for? Sure can. So, a trash out is exactly like it sounds. We are going to go in and remove the trash from the property. Um, the difference is, is we go inside a vacant property, so we're responsible for removing all of the debris that you find inside of a vacant home, um, as well as the exterior, so the backyard, the front yard, um, and depending on the time of year, you're going to be responsible for removal of all of the overgrowth, the brush, the grass if it's high. Um, basically, we want to come in and create a clean canvas for um, our securing team that will come in behind you and install clear board. Um, the intent is to, to remove that blight nuisance from the neighborhood and to make it a more marketable um, piece of property for the land bank to sell. Because once we're complete, we turn the property right back over to the land bank and the land bank sells those properties. And so far to date, we've, we've managed to completely stabilize over a thousand properties um, and it's generated close to $2 million in sales for the land bank. So it's, it's, the intent is being met. Um, but what we don't have is a lot of vendors that can actually come in and do this work. So we're actively looking for um, companies that can handle um, packages of 24. So you'd get 24 properties in each package, um, and you'd be responsible for turning those over in about 10 weeks. Um, and we purposely designed them that size because we thought even the smallest of company could manage to get one group. Um, so if you were a very small operation, a dad and a couple of kids, and you've got <laughs> access to some trailers that you're going to properly dispose of the debris, because you can't do any illegal dumping, right? Um, once you, if you have that, you're able to come into the city and actually start doing work with the city, and you could grow from there. Um, we have had one company already started off relatively small, PMP. They came in and they knocked it out the park with their first with their first package. Um, they turned right back around and got five packages right behind that. Um, so they went from being a relatively small company to a relatively medium-sized company in a very short period of time, and they're still looking to get more work and to grow. But we still have a lot of properties out. Um, we've got about close to 2,000 that we're dealing with right now, and we have the potential for another 4,000. Um, so there is work. So she's asking about bonding. Um, so we require that you have a payment and performance bond. And you could call and get you a surety payment and performance bond. And 
in the proposal and um, portion of it, I think it's like 25% right. that they require. So whatever the contract value is, you have to make sure that you have 25% of that. So um, when you call your insurance company, I mean the bonding company, make sure you get my card and let us help you talk to the bonding company to let them know. Or we could give you the document so that you can share it with them. And once they read it, uh, they'll know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, so that should help you with that. Uh, but it is a requirement because we want to make sure that we're covered um, in the event that something happens and you can't finish our property. Um, and we also want to make sure that you have this performance bond so in the event that you got some subs out there that they could get paid. But we know everybody's going to pay their subs because the city will pay you on time. And by the way, um, on this program, they have a shorter payment term. Um, so typically, our payment terms with the city of Detroit are 30 days. Um, and this program, yours is what, net 15? Net 14. Net 14. So that's awesome. Um, and that will help you to keep your money floating so that you can pay your people quicker. Um, you can also use it um, if you got to pay for equipment. You can get your payments in. Uh, bonding companies see that. It helps you to build your bonding credibility. So this is really um, a good opportunity that they've done some set-asides uh, for the companies that are participating in this program. Um, are there any other questions? Come on. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Damon with Higher Muscle Moving. Um, my question, we're, uh, we're in the process of making a transition. What we do, majority is white glove office moving. But in, pre in preparation for this program, we've purchased uh, dump trailers, pickup trucks, things of that nature. And uh, my question was, You guys answered my question. You talked about the uh, net 14 terms. <laughs> we talked about the net 14 terms. We talked about the bonding. Um, and I guess I just want to know uh, how quickly uh, is this program going to be rolled out? Trash outs? Yeah. So we are actively bidding trash outs now. Um, and we will continue to bid them at a pace of about two groups a month. Um, so they're about every other week. You can expect to see a package coming out. Um, and, and we'll continue to do that as long as we have properties. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. So the important part is you got to go through the pre-qualification process. Mm -hmm. So when you go to that website, you want to make sure you get your information in so that you can get pre-qualified so that she says she's actively bidding it out now. So when the next one comes, you already have your information in. You've been vetted and you'll be able to be it on it. Oh, okay, so Creole is on it, all right. I told you he's the guy. Do you have a question? All right. My question uh, for the trash outs. One, are there any um, insurance requirements that you guys have for us? And also, with those insurance requirements, can we, do we purchase those? Are we able to purchase those? after we do the um, processing or must all of that be done prior? So just so that I'm clear that you, you want to know if, insurance is, if insurance is required and if you need to have it prior to bidding. So really, yes, you need to have insurance. Um, the requirements will be included in the packet um, so that you would know the exact um, limits. You're going to have to have general liability you know, auto insurance, you're gonna to have to have coverage because you are gonna be doing work um, with the city. And of course, you know, if something were to happen, they're gonna always sue the deepest pockets, but we gonna give them your insurance first, right? Um, but at the time, yes, before you can be officially awarded, you have to have proof of insurance. Now, just for a side note, this is no requirement, this is not in the, you know, in the package. But just as you know, a, a manager who's accepting proposals, one of the things that I'm going to be paying attention to is if you, you know, 
sometimes we have contractors that try and pull slick moves and have insurance for the bid, and then as soon as you get the work, then all of a sudden your insurance is canceled. That doesn't fly with me. We, we believe that if you are intentional about being a business, you need to carry insurance. That's for your safety. Um, so that was just a piece of advice to you. You want to make sure that you're covered. Um, we, tr we hope that we don't have any situations where we require insurance. Um, we, we like to get through work and not have any problems. But yes, the city will, is, we will require you to have insurance to protect us. I don't know if it was through the trash out or was it another bid that I was looking for, but you guys require um, some type of references from like uh, jobs that were, I think, $15,000 or higher from, I was looking at the trash out and also the BN, BNP program. Oh, that, that must be a BNP requirement because okay, so we don't have that type of requirement on trash out. BNP is the Bridge and Neighborhoods Program, um, and they renovate the homes um, that are in the area. Um, but I do want to go back to the insurance. Um, we do require you to list the city of Detroit as an additional insured, um, and a part of that, you must give us a 30-day notice if you have a cancellation. Um, so it has to be written on there from the insurance company before we'll accept it. Uh, so this way, if you decide that you're going to play a game and cancel your insurance, um, your insurance company is going to automatically notify us, and then that way you wouldn't be allowed to participate. Uh, so we want to make sure that you're being a good partner with us um, and just keep us you know, in the line of communication as to what's going on. Okay. Are there one more question? Okay. We got one more presentation, too. Me again. Um, I'll keep it quick. Um, so uh, you mentioned that um, landscaping was um, a component of doing the trash outs. So would that bleed over into the, um, the other supply schedule for the uh, grounds maintenance? So no? Oh, trash, outs are, trash outs are separate. OK. And then is money held for subs if we're using subcontractors? In our contracts, no. You're, you're responsible for paying your subs. Got it. And then how is the, well, I'll email the question as far as how is the bidding handled. So I'll put that to the side. Yeah. No, ask the question. Somebody might want to know, like, how is the bidding handled? Well, back again. Last question. <laughs> um, so with the trash shouts, how is the um, bidding handled for those? Um, is there a... Um, uh, like a open um, house where they can go to the sites as one group or do they just go to them and look at them from the outside and submit bids blind? No, so you're, you're provided the addresses for all of the locations in each group. So a group will come to you and it'll be, it'll be, it'll be labeled C1 and C1 will have 24 properties and the properties are open so you're free to go in if you want. Um, but we've already surveyed those properties um, and so we give you a um, a, a estimate so that everyone has the same kind of quantities for the amount of debris that we believe is inside and outside of the property. Um, so you can typically use that as your bid, but we always, always, always recommend that you go see the properties in advance. Correct. Okay. I'm Tish King with RT Contracting. If you've been already pre-qualified for the trash outs, do you have to be pre-qualified again for the, for the um, supply schedule and the grounds services? It's, an, it's a separate pre-qualification. <laughs> yes, but similar work. So if you were already pre-qualified, some of that same information, you might be able to resubmit, just kind of see what it says. So the consolidated affidavits, all of those things, you can use those again. It's just making sure that you tell us about your company and what service you can provide on the ground services um, so that we can vet you for that. So typically, yes, we, we have to be able to, to document or see the difference in the, the debris, right? So our usual issue that we have are tires. Um, you'll, we'll, we'll put properties out for bid and then we'll come back and someone have, will have put 400 tires inside of a house. Not uncommon. So, <laughs> so, 
So in that case, we, we take provisions. Like if, you, if, if, if there's an additional cost to you, um, we take that into consideration at that time. We don't expect you to now be responsible for those 400 tires that have just popped up. Um, but if we cannot, and I'm being honest with you, you know, like we'll go back because our survey will take photos of what's there. And so we are expecting you to bid what we feel is that current state. Um, if you get there and you're, you're like, well, all of a sudden there's a, there's a car here. Um, maybe you need, during the bid process, you need to let us know, hey, we found a car out here. Um, and we can either figure out what we're going to do with that, if we're going to have you included in your bid, or we need to issue an addendum and tell you that that's now a part of your scope. Um, but if not, and it's something that's found later, we will, you know, it's not a change order because we've made provisions inside of the contract for, just for those types of allowances. Um, so we would just have to provide you in a service allowance to cover that additional cost. So they are public in a variety of locations. Um, they're public with OCP. Um, they're public on the dashboard, on the demo dashboard. Um, they're public in our monthly newsletter. Um, they're public in our quarterly reports. We make sure that we, there's no doubt about who got what contract when it comes to demo. I can't hear. He said the demolition tracker website. What a, what he said, a, is, it, is it working? Yes, if you go to DetroitMI.gov forward slash demolitions on the right hand side, you can click on demo tracker, demo dashboard, I'm sorry, and it'll take you um, straight to our kind of dashboard page. It'll give you um, the citywide information. You can drill down to as far as the neighborhood. If you know a particular neighborhood that you're interested in, you can find a lot of information on the demo um, dashboard. There's also the interactive map there where you can drill down as far as into the property. Um, you can also find all of the City of Detroit um, contracts that we've awarded on our website. Uh, it'll say contracts awarded. So if you go to the Office of Contract of Procurement and you want to look for contracts awarded, click on it. It shows you all of our contracts. Are there any, oh, come to the mic. I was wondering if there's a unit price for how you're removing the debris. No, we don't have a set unit price. Okay, so like, is it, like when you said 400 tires, is it anything done by a weight? Or how much it costs to remove it and dump it and get rid of it? I mean, there, there is when you take it to those locations, we don't require that inside of the bid. Um, we do have like the rate sheets in the event that we have um, additional charges or additional costs in which we do kind of ask you for those breakdowns. Um, but that's cost that you provide to us. We don't give you that. Um, and we do negotiate those costs. So you could say, in your, it, you could decide that you're going to charge us $100 a tire and we could come back and go, no, we're going to pay you 10 and we work it out from there. But that's only on the additional costs. Um, you submit the price that you see. So mm -hmm. when you get to the site, you know, we will have told you it's 100 cubic yards, and you can figure out how much uh, it's going to cost you to remove 100 cubic yards. Okay. That's what I wanted, the cubic yards. Thank you. Well, it, it, I don't know if it's in cubic yards or not. You know, it could be. Hello. C can you hear me? Yes. So I know you're over demolition. I know before a home gets demoed, you guys do asbestos surveys. Do you ever have contracts for that? No, not directly. Um, asbestos contracts or asbestos or abatement contractors are a part or subs of the demolition contract. They're the demolition contractor's responsibility. Okay, all right, thank you. But what you could do is when they put out a demo bid and if there's a pre-bid, you can attend a pre-bid so that you can see who is attending what company and you can network with them so that you can be included in their potential bid or something. So that's a great way to network if you want to find out. Uh, Pre-bids are open to whoever would like to attend them. Um, so I encourage you, if it's something that you want to know about, attend a pre-bid, even if you're not ready to bid, 
but just listen to what they're saying, get the information, um, network with other companies. Um, there's something called a joint venture or a mentor venture that um, Civil Rights and Inclusion is going to talk about shortly. Um, so might be a good start for you. But Tony, don't forget, we have done outreaches for the abatement companies yep. in which we, we, have, we hold a weekly meeting with our demo contractors um, because they're always looking for subs. Um, and so we present you to them in these group meetings. Um, they get to hear about your company, you do a quick little presentation, um, and then that's a, we, we provide that kind of direct contact with our contractors for you. Thank you for that. Um, so I'd like to turn it over to our Civil Rights and Inclusion. Well, hello everyone, good evening. I am Denasia Neal and I'm the Business and Opportunity Manager in the Civil Rights, Inclusion and Opportunity Department. Um, I also work with Eric Hobson, who was just around taking pictures. He's the coordinator, and Tanika Griggs is the director of compliance, who is not here today. But our lovely deputy director, Erica Hill, is also present today. Um, to go over our purpose, it, our purpose is to encourage and increase the utilization of local businesses by giving certified businesses the competitive edge needed to procure with the city of Detroit. So you are not required to get certified, but if you want to kind of get ahead of the curve and uh, have a competitive edge with all of the other companies around the United States who try to get the bids, then we definitely recommend you to get certified. Um, there are about 10 different, 10 different types of certifications. Um, so we have the Detroit base, the Detroit headquarter, Detroit resident, Detroit small business, Detroit based micro business, uh, Detroit startup, minority owned and woman owned. And we also have the joint venture and the mentor venture, which Tony was just talking about. Uh, we also provided checklists outside. So I hope everyone was able to get one and also our flyer, which will lead you to our, um, our website and the actual application. So the Detroit based is really one of the, the most popular. Um, and within that one, you just have to provide us your taxes, your lease agreement from the previous year and the current year. And you also have to do obviously business within the city limits. Um, and you also have to provide us an affidavit of applicant and all of this should be on the checklist. For each, for each different type, it'll tell you what you need, uh, but the affidavit of applicant is definitely needed for every type of uh, certification and you have to get it notarized. So just keep that in mind um, moving forward. But these are some of the types and it lets you know what you need and it's also on our website, it's also on the checklist that should have been provided to you. Um, so, oh, these are, oh, the application process. So the application process takes about 45 days. Within the application process, we receive your application, you upload all of your documents to the portal, and it comes to us and we review all of the documents and make sure that everything is in compliance with the city ordinance. Um, and then from there, we'll schedule you a site visit and we come out and view your office. It could be your home due to COVID. We have been accepting home-based businesses as long as you have an actual office and you are operating as a business within your home. Um, otherwise, it's usually a brick and mortar and we come out and verify that you are operating as the business you say you are. Um, and then after that, you will receive a invoice assuming that you pass the site visit and um, after your invoice is paid, well, Treasury will send out your invoice, and then after your invoice is paid, then uh, you will receive your certification within seven to 10 business days. Um, and there is a fee, so the fee is based on your previous, your gross receipts from the previous tax year. Um, so as you can see, or if you wanna, um, it's on the, it should be on the, I don't think the fees is on the checklist, but it's on our website. But if you wanna take a picture um, just so you can keep that in mind. 
and then for actually the Detroit startup minority owned and women owned, um, there's just a fee of 250. So if you get all three of those, you will still only be paying 250. And it's one fee per application, not um, per certification. So keep that in mind as well. Um, so the benefits of becoming a Detroit based or Detroit headquarter or Detroit resident um, or Detroit small is that you receive equalization credits and this is the point where you are kind of put ahead of the curve. So depending on the contract size and what um, certification you have, you'll receive equalization credits and that will put you, um, well, it will help you out with bidding for your contract. It will help you with the price. So let's say you have a $100,000 contract that you're bidding for and you have 10% um, in equalization credits, then your contract would be 90% and that gives Detroit businesses the preference versus someone bidding from California and they're not in Detroit. So that's the whole, uh, well, it's not really the whole purpose, but that helps you put, put you ahead of the curve. So um, keep that in mind when you are applying. And then um, the other benefits is appreciation events. So uh, we have different events with different departments of the city. So you are able to network like Tony was saying. And also I would recommend going to the pre-bid so you can network and probably get the mentor venture or the joint venture. So if you're a smaller business, that's helpful. So you will be able to work alongside someone who may have been certified for the past five or 10 years or whatnot. Um, so that has its own benefits within itself. And then networking and business opportunities, you have access to capital, um, possible business expansion, and then you have a visibility on, the, on our register, which is also online. So anyone can go on and see that your business is registered and maybe wanna do business with you or reach out or whatnot. Um, so that's a great benefit as well. And then if you have any questions, I have cards. Um, my email is up here. Um, you can call me or email me. I'll um, answer any questions that you have. If you have any questions now, um, feel free to ask and I'll answer. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the process. So let me know if um, you all have any questions. How, how long has your office been um, I, I seem to remember some announcement when your office was made. So how long has a pre-qualification process been in place? For the certification? For the certification, yeah. Well, there's no pre-qualification. I mean pre-certification. Um, how, how long has it been in place? Yeah, how long has this been advan an advantage for the uh, Detroit-based businesses? Or how long is that? has this process been in place so that it could ad advantage Detroit businesses? I think maybe about six. 15 years. Okay. 15 okay. Years. okay, thank you. Oh, nope. one other question. So when, um, on some of the, um, uh, the contract uh, bids, it does have that section where it says, are you a Detroit business, or, uh, a Detroit headquartered or Detroit um, based business? And, uh, and then you get points, you know, you get extra points, right, if you, if you are. But if you haven't gone through the pre-qualification? Or the certificate, yeah. Certification mm -hmm. process, if you, if you haven't done that, um, perhaps you were solicited as a vendor, right, uh, to apply, and you haven't gone through that, would you therefore not be ahead of a, uh, of a company that was maybe had equal, um, you know, qualifications, but they were not based in Detroit, um, if you hadn't gone through that pre-certification? Yeah, Tony can help you with that one. Yes. <laughs> Um, so it actually depends. Um, you are not required to have the certification and you can still win a bid. Uh, you could just have the lowest price um, and be the lowest responsible bidder. Everything is not just on price, it's lowest responsible bidder, which means do you meet all the other qualifications as well. Um, so if you're not certified, you still can be competitive, but it's always good to have those extra points 
because in the time where there's a difference between you and somebody else and it's small, if you have those extra credits, we're gonna base your bid on your equalized, is what we call it, your credit points versus what they actually bid it. But you still receive your contract at what your higher value was, which was your base bid. Now, but those credits will help you in that determination. So it's, it's really important to try to get it. If you're registered, I'm already registered at a, as a woman-owned business, small business, um, woman-owned small business. So my a brick and mortar address is already listed in Detroit. So would I still get or qualify for the equalization credits or do I need the WOSB certification in addition to the Detroit small business to get the credit? Yes, you do. So you will have to go through our application process to get okay. those uh, equalization credits. You spoke about it and uh, we spoke about it with the trash outs. How am I put in contact with uh, the businesses that are already um, registered? You spoke on pairing small businesses with the companies that are already working with you guys. How am I put in, in contact with those companies or the uh, seminars that you guys have with matching those uh, companies? Um, so the Office of Contract Procurement, when you go on the website, um, you can look for pre-bid information. So you'll see open bids when you go out there. Um, I'm going to give you one of these magnets right here. So you can make sure you scan. You got one? Okay. Uh, so you want to go on there and you want to look for um, trash out, whatever it is you're interested in. And it'll tell you in that um, document there's a pre-bid meeting on X date. So you attend on X date, whether it's virtual or in person, and then you can say in the chat, if it's, um, if it's virtual, you can say in the chat, hi, my name is Tony, and um, I'm interested in doing work with someone for trash outs. Um, here's my contact information. And they read the chats. Um, you could download chat and everything, and so that's your intro to it. If it's in person, you could come and say, hey, my name is Tony Lennon. I'm interested in working with you, and you can have a conversation that way, too. Yeah. Now, um, Director Council was talking about pairing up um, abatement people with the demolition uh, contractors, which was something a little bit different. Now, that, uh, Director Council, how would you want them to reach out to you so that they could do a presentation to the uh, demolition contractors. So, I would expect you. Uh oh. Mike, one. Am I here? Okay. <laughs> I would expect you to submit your contact information to um, Tony Limit's um, um, office, um, and in that way, she can collect them and bring them to us. Um, we will, at some point, identify you know what day we would have that 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 quick meeting. Um, and our meetings are very brief on Wednesday. Um, they're usually at 1 o'clock, and I'm not even playing. We run about seven minutes. Um, so when we have these types of outreaches, our meetings go about 20 minutes. Um, but it's an opportunity for you to present yourself to, and they're Zoom, well, they're Teams, but it's an opportunity for you to present yourself and introduce yourself to our contractors. And so right now we've got about 20 contractors in the program, um, so there is opportunity. Um, can those people who raised their hand earlier to say that they were not registered, raise your hands again? Okay, keep them up. Can you be a startup business to register for trash outs? You definitely can. I'm, the, the requirements that we're looking for is that you have a crew, so you, you will have to identify who's going to be actually working for you. Um, you have to prov provide proof that you have a vehicle to actually get to the locations and a means to remove the debris from the site. Um, the requirements are very low for the trash out companies, um, and it was intentionally done because we want to encourage um, s development of small businesses. It's very intentional in that matter. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> if you say you uh, get a new franchise company and you have no history, but the company is uh, an old company or you know, pretty well known, say been around 15, 20 years, would that affect your bidding 
or do you say, well, you don't have enough experience, you can't have it, or? So we do require experience, and we will look at the experience of the company that's bidding. So in your proposal, you will mm -hmm. list your experience information and also your references as well. Ah. Okay, so you can use your franchise people to reference. So we're, we're asking you to come to the mic so that we can have it on the video. It's kind of hard to hear when you're back there. Uh, I came in a little bit late, so maybe this question has already been answered. But um, I have a new startup company that I, that I just uh, built. I started about a year ago. And I built it with, with, the, with trash outs in mind. So I, got, I have like the, the dumpsters and the crews and everything ready to go. But I'm having a, a very difficult time finding out where the, like I'm on Oracle, I've, I've done my, my certifications for Creo, but I'm like, where are the, where's this list? Uh, how do I bid? Like I really have an issue with the, the nuts and bolts about like, where do I get this list? How do I start bidding? I hear people talking about pre-qualification submitted all these documents and got them notarized. Am I pre-qualified? I haven't heard anything, but I've done these things. Like it's kind of like the nuts and bolts in, of actually starting the bid and like ready to get the contract, at least put my, my uh, name in the hat. Maybe someone can answer some of that or? Maybe Tony can answer. Tony? Right behind you. Right behind you. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, uh, email me your company information and I'll get with the buyer to find out your status. Because uh, it sounds like he's already went through the bulk of the um, process. You're just waiting to know if you are qualified. Um, so we could get to that tomorrow. Yep. Well, if you email me tonight, because I kind of work around the clock, um, <laughs> you give it to me tonight, it's the uh, first thing on my agenda in the morning or in the middle of the night when I wake up. Any other questions? No? All right, going once, going twice. Well, thank you everyone for your time, for coming out today. This has been um, a great turnout. Um, and we'd like to say thank you to Council Member Gabriela Santa, uh, Santiago Romero for hosting us tonight and partnering with us, as well as uh, Council President Mary Sheffield. I'd like to thank all of you for coming out, uh, spending tonight with us, and we definitely like to thank our directors who took the time out uh, to come out uh, from Civil Rights and Inclusion, uh, the Demolition Department, and General Services, and as well as Nancy for putting everything together, her and her outreach team. So a uh, special shout out to our media team that is here. So thank you, everyone. Be safe and have a good night. Thank you.